Let's talk about it, America. The standoff between Mexico, the Mexican president, and the U.S. president, Donald Trump. The Mexican leader was supposed to meet here in the United States with President Trump next week at the White House. But now, let's go live to Layla, Layla Santiago in Mexico City. Layla, what are you learning? Well, just, uh, let's see, five minutes ago, the president of Mexico, Enrique Peña Nieto, has tweeted essentially saying that he is not going to be meeting with President Donald Trump on the 31st as scheduled. And I want to sort of read to you exactly what he says. I'm translating as I read here. He said, this morning we informed the White House that I will not be attending the reunion, uh, the work to for next Tuesday to meet with POTUS, the president of the United States. He then tweeted one minute later, Mexico reiterates it does want to work with the United States to come to an agreement that can be mutually beneficial. All of this happening in just the last six minutes. But let's go beyond the six minutes on what actually led to this. <coughs> mutually see, beneficial. Yesterday, there was a group of Mexican senators who actually called for President Peña Nieto to cancel this meeting after President Trump signed the executive orders to move forward yeah. with uh, building the wall, even though Mexico says they will not pay for it. Donald Trump continues to insist that they will, in some form, reimburse. And so he now, uh, President Peña Nieto, right. has his delegation. Okay, so here's what Trump is going to do. Here's, here's what Trump is going to do, and here's, here's what the effect of it is going gonna, is gonna to be. There's going to be many repercussions for what he is going to do, but this is what I speculate he's going to do as far as paying for the wall. He already let us know the American people are paying for this wall. He's letting the, he's letting the president of Mexico know that they're going to reimburse him. See, what Donald Trump is going to do, it has nothing to do with if you're going to uh, uh, willingly give us the money <coughs> because we have embargoes with Mexico. We have trade with them. Um, and this is where Donald Trump is going to get the money reimbursed. See, he's going to set this wall up. And you got to understand, there's already, there's already a wall there. And um, he's just going to complete the last 30% of it or add on more to the wall that's already there. But there, people are jumping over the wall all day, all day long. And Donald Trump knows this. He's like, they can just use a rope to climb over it and, you know, and get down. So it's going to be a waste of taxpayers' money. Uh, <clears throat> but nonetheless, he's going to build this stupid wall anyway. But it, it, there's another part to it. It has a lot to do with trade. That's what Donald Trump is really after. Donald Trump doesn't like the, I think it's NAFTA. Donald Trump doesn't like how we trade with other countries. And uh, the long and short of it is what we do as Americans. Okay, let's look at our pay rate. Our pay rate, we're trying to raise minimum wage up to $15. You look at the pay rate, then you look at the tax rate in most of the country, I think it's in between seven and eight, you know, cents on the dollar. <clears throat> well, what he's trying to do, what, what he's saying is your, your tax rate is going to go up because our dollar rate that we pay an hour, even at minimum wage, uh, is, you know, going to be with 12 to 15, so on and so forth, just, just for an average worker. So he's saying that, I know this is scatterbrained, so he's saying that uh, what he's going to do when he builds this wall, it's <coughs> he's going to charge Mexico as far as trading, he's going to raise the price of what they're trading, what's coming in. That's how they're going to pay for it. Now, he's he's planning on robbing Peter to pay Paul. And you're like, well, what has our minimum wage got to do with it? Well, what it has to do with it is if he does that to Mexico, he's also going to do it to China. 
He's also going to do it to every other country out there. He's going to uh, uh, he's going to keep trading with them, but he's going to cost them more to trade with us in order for him to get monies to do all the other things that he needs. The backlash of that is uh, the cost of the taxes is going to go skyrocket. And because the taxes is, I mean, it's going to be crazy because the taxes in the price for goods are also going to go up. So is our wages. Now it's not like we're going to be all of a sudden, everybody's going to be $30 an hour and still everything is going to be uh seven cents on a dollar. That's not what's going to happen. What's going to happen is it's going to be $30 an hour and it's going to be $1.20 on taxes uh, for everything you buy. <coughs> In other words, a loaf of bread is going to go from $2.99 to about $10. This is what Donald Trump is all about. This is the short run. The long run is eventually <coughs> uh, companies who are also leaving like offshore companies who are in New Delhi, you know, somewhere in uh, 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 China and all these other places where they can get lower rate wages, Donald Trump is also going to tax them more. He's going to punish anybody who leaves the country and has other workers do the same thing that we can do in order for for our workers to get those jobs. This is what he was talking about. He's like, jobs, jobs, jobs. I'm going to get more jobs. See what he, it, But when he's trying to get you more jobs, uh, the, the taxpayer is going to pay for that in the short run. In the long run, yes, uh, <coughs> the quality of the product is going to change. And that's going to be either bad or good. So if you like things that are made in China and, and you don't like stuff that's made in America, well, guess what? Some of your products that are made in America that were made in China is going to be made in America and you might not like that or you might love it. It all depends on what it is. If it's uh, American-made cars uh, that are also from China, like Honda, I used to work for Honda. And, and, and let me give you a picture of this. Let me just give you a picture. And the Honda plant where I worked at is like a mile in circumference. It's huge. Uh, so... They have two lines where they build cars. Now, each line for each shift, so if you take the, the day shift, they put out 500 cars. The night shift, another 500 cars, maybe 497 or somewhere along that line. Every day, except Sunday. Every day. That's one line. So you times two, you got yourself roughly 2,000 cars coming out every single day. These cars are already bought. These cars are already bought by the dealer. There's a good chance they're already bought by individuals too. A lot of them are because you can just order online and you, you already pay the dealer, the taxes, so on and so forth. Then they make your car to your specs or the car that you already want, yada, yada, you know, so on and so forth. Because Honda is the number one selling car other than Ford Taurus. So they're both up there. Nonetheless, I know this is long. I'm sorry. Bear with me. Nonetheless, so that's a, a foreign car made here in America. This is what he's trying to bring back. He's trying to get companies to come back to America, but the companies don't want to come to back to America because the price is too high to pay American workers. Plus, people are getting sued left and right. You got EEOC. You have, I mean, there's there's just all kind of things going on with the American uh, workplace that has turned off employees. Uh, my dad used to work for Goodwear, Goodyear, where there's a huge Goodyear plant in Africa, and they pay them a dollar a day. So imagine if Donald Trump punishes Goodyear and says, okay, well, you're over there in Africa, a dollar a day. Well, I'm going to, we'll just take a guess. I don't know what their taxes is for what they bring in, a crate or a canister or however they bring it in. But let's just say uh, when they're shipping something, they ship it by ship. Let's say by ship, and they ship it uh, by a huge uh, tin canister of tires. I, I don't know if they do. I'm just guessing. So let's just say that each canister is two thousand dollars. Okay, we're just gonna guess. Well, he's uh, uh, if it's a the canister if the product in there is worth two thousand dollars, and there's of course you know 
taxes on that. And let's just say that the average tax uh, is still seven cents. You just kind of do the math from there. Uh, <clears throat> on two thousand dollars, put some zeros behind it. What's it like? Uh, 70, 70 bucks or something like that. I don't know. Uh, but nonetheless, if you times that by, let's just say they're shipping, you know, four hundred canisters in a week, you know, then you got, you know, twenty-eight hundred, I guess. Uh, or more, I don't know, my math is not that great, but nonetheless, if they take that seven cents and he punishes Goodyear and he says, you know what, <clears throat> if you don't bring your plant back here, then your taxes is going to be a <clears throat> dollar fifty a canister. That's what he's going to do. This is where all of this Mexico is going to build this wall or pay for this wall. He's just going to rob Peter to pay Paul. And I know what I'm saying is kind of out there, but for those of you who are kind of listening to what you're saying and into economics, you kind of get the gist of what I'm saying. I'm not an economics person. I'm just kind of listening and trying to piece together like a puzzle what's actually going to happen. And this is why he's so uh, persistent about this dog on the wall. It's not so much that it's keeping Mexico out. There's nothing to do with that. It's a kick. Well, it has something to do with that, but it's kickstarting <coughs> all of his plans for taxation and for getting companies to stay over here in America to create jobs, to raise the taxes, and eventually, in the long run, the the price of the taxes will go back down and the wages will stay up. That's basically what he's trying to do. It's your boy Tone202. You can correct me if I'm wrong. I don't mind.